Ecom Masters, welcome to the show. My name is Mike Weiss, Chief Community Officer at Dropified, and as a thank you for tuning in to the e-commerce mastery show, we've put together a special podcast-only e-commerce training just for you. Now, in it, you're going to learn the ins and outs of how to set up your own brand of products where you can literally put your own labels, brands, logos, and messaging over top of top selling, in demand, high quality, high profit products that are exclusive to supplements, CBD, skincare, and pet products. And here's the key no minimum order quantities, no upfront inventory costs. And I'm going to show you how to do this in literally minutes. Now, guys, we refine these principles over the course of five years with working with over a hundred thousand of our own e compreneur customers just like you so to get immediate 100 percent free access all you got to do is go to dropify.com forward slash podcast dash special or you can just click the link below and you're going to learn exactly how we do this in just minutes thank you so much for being part of the dropify family and enjoy the show Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of e-commerce mastery. I'm your host, Ben Gothard, and today we have the honor of speaking with Carolyn Lowe, a extraordinary entrepreneur, an extraordinary entrepreneur who founded ROI Swift in 2015. Not only has she been helping emerging consumer brands get expert help which is a really cool space of taking you from emergence to prominence. But her team grew an apparel and footwear company from $0 to over $12 million in just 18 months through paid Facebook and Instagram ads. That is a big number, $12 million. That's a lot of millions. It's a whole dozen of them. So I'm so excited, Carolyn, that you have decided to come on the show today. And I know we're going to talk about some fundamentals um, so thank you so much for being here. It's truly a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Ben. All right. So let's, before we get into those fundamentals, I do want to dive into your story and understand how you got to where you are today. Sure. So I'm probably two decades older than most of your audience as well, maybe three decades older than you, but um, I'll fast forward to 1999. I was actually working in direct mails. This was 20 years ago. There were no, people were buying their first laptop. So Dell recruited me to come run their uh, consumer marketing and work in their direct mail business. And so we would send out 200 million catalogs a year and sell billions of dollars worth of computers to customers buying their first computer. You know, fast forward 20 years. Um, I did that for six years, ran global marketing and events for them, uh, for a, a research firm after I left Dell after six years, started the Dell and Costco relationship, sold a million dollars worth of laptops on QVC in eight minutes. So that was a great thing about Dell. It was a, a amazing six years. It was sort of the the cheapest MBA because they were actually paying you um, and you felt like you were getting your MBA while you were there. And uh, then I went to a global market research company, had two kids. My kids are now 12 and 10 and um, went back to work when my kids were five, five and seven to a mom and baby brand, small mom and baby brand. I was recruited to run their Amazon e-commerce. It was a fledgling little business um, that later then got acquired by Reckitt Benkiser last year, who owns Lysol and Mucinex and all those other brands that you probably have in your home. So that's another one of my favorite success stories. Worked there for a year. And then um, as I was telling you right before the show, they started going down the road of $10 vitamins for Target. And everybody in e-commerce knows you can't make money on $10 products on e-commerce um, unless you're hand delivering them because the shipping costs are just so exorbitant these days. So as product prices come down, shipping doesn't come down. Shipping's only going up. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things for D2C brands to figure out um, is how to, how to overcome that. So I went to one of the founders of the company and said, would you give me a reference? I might need a job. And she said, uh, no, no, you can't leave. We, our business has grown tremendously uh, on Amazon. And so 
uh, I met with her and a, a founder of a company called Build a Sign here in Austin, Texas. He grew it to 100 million and sold it. And the three of us got together and said, hey, everybody we know that are entrepreneurs, that are CEOs, that are in EO and YPO need a digital agency that doesn't stink. So, you know, a month later, we started the company and that was in 2015. And so can you talk a little bit about how you built some companies and, and some of the people that you've worked with now since you've started that agency in 2015? Sure. Um, we, we primarily focus on emerging brands, you know, three to 30 million. We feel like they really need expert help. And uh, as I said, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen. So we have three core competencies. We run Amazon for brands. Uh, we don't work, we don't really work with resellers, but we work mostly with brands. Um, so we're an Amazon agency partner through Amazon. We've been approved through them. We're a Facebook agency partner. We're a Google agency partner. And most of the emerging brands on the D2C space, we've grown profitably through paid social. When I say paid social, I mean mostly Facebook and Instagram, a little bit with TikTok, a little bit with Snapchat, but for the most part, you know, um, the, the footwear brand that we talked about, the Western brand, that was all, you know, 95% of their marketing dollars were in the early days were being spent on paid search and paid so uh, basically, basically paid social, not much on paid search because you're going up against the big boys and, you know, cowboy boots is, you know, you're not going to be profitable buying that search term. So when you're going in and launching a brand, we always feel like paid social and those guerrilla marketing, the bloggers, the people who are passionate about your product is the best place to start. Awesome. So let's dive into our fundamentals. I know we identified three of them uh, before the show started. We were chatting a little bit. So let's dive into the first one, which is to have a solid product that solves a real problem. Right. We've seen a lot of sort of me too brands that may not make it. Um, you know, I always come back to uh, the, the footwear brand, right? That that industry was ripe for disruption. You would go and you would want to buy a pair of cowboy boots and you'd have to go to a store and you'd pay 50% more than what the store paid to the manufacturer. And so really cutting out the middleman and going direct, that was their key differentiator. And as I said, you know, think about this as a brand owner, as a CEO, as a founder, what is your, how are you different in 11 words or less? And if you can't answer that question, go back and answer that question. Um, how are you better or different than anything on the market today? I love that quote. If you can't answer that question, go back and answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like we really have to focus on building a product or bringing a product to a market that is, is new, is different, is substantially better at actually solve something like a pain point that our future or existing customers are having. Definitely, definitely. A, a mom and baby brand that I worked with that before I started the agency, um, they noticed a, a problem in the marketplace or they were able to innovate um, for the longest time, these breastfeeding teas. You know, if you're a breastfeeding mom and you want to, you know, supplement, make more milk, there was always just either these horse pills or these horrible tasting teas. So they went and innovated and made a powder drinks, drink mix that's, you know, in packets. Um, and they were also able to take those horse pills, you know, down to like a small pill to a smaller pill. And you only had to take two or three versus six. So that was a great way to be disruptive. They built a great brand um, called Milk Flow and uh, as part of their as part of their brand offering and really took off because it solved a need for moms out there. So how do you balance this idea of you're trying to get started, you're trying to find a product that works and you don't really have any customers to get feedback from, but you still need to bring a product to the market that solves a real need and that fills a gap in that marketplace. Like how do you, how do you go about doing that from your perspective? Yeah, I think it's a good, really good question. It's all about talking to people, right? So start getting a focus group of, of a few people. You know, we, uh, 
even if it's like selling your product at, you know, we've had folks sell their product at farmer's market, learn all about um, what people love about it, what they don't. They learned lots of great feedback. Like you cannot, um, you know, you can't discount that enough. I did a focus group. I, I mentor a bunch of CPG brands. It's a great deal for them. I pay them to mentor and give up my time. So yeah, they, it's a great organization. So, but I did uh, mentor this emerging cleaning company. I love this company. They're called EVYVY and they've basically turned your cleaning products into almost like Keurig type pods, right? Where you just send the bottle, right? Why are we shipping water all over the world? And they thought that the plastics and the lack of plastics and this really cool model where you just drop it in, you fill it with water from your sink, right? 95% of our cleaning solutions are water. So they've developed this great thing and they thought that it was all about the reduced plastic. And, and yeah, people say they care about that, but at the end of the day, what they care about is, does it work? And I did a focus group with 12 moms. I was like, cause they're the ones who are buying cleaning products, right? For the most part. And what they cared about was that they could store 12 of them in this tiny little cardboard box underneath their sink. And so the brand had never really thought about, hey, that's one of our differentiators. It's not that we're saving all this plastic. Yeah, everybody says they want to care about the environment, but at the end of the day, they're going to buy the product that works and makes it easy for them. So it was the convenience factor. Mm -hmm. That was a real differentiator. Exactly. Awesome. So it seems like, you almost have to experiment with it and do your very best to solve the problem at first. And then once you do have, if, I mean, if you're not getting any sales at all, then might be time to have a, a you know, a, a conversation about pivoting. But if you have some sales and you have some customers that you can then talk to and ask, they might be able to tell you more about why your product is great for them than you would even think of just as in the example you just shared. That's really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. I did some work for a men's. It was um, basically they would come to you and measure you for trousers, suits, you know, so you could get an Armani suit, same quality, better made for half the price because they came to you, they would send a stylist out to your house. She would measure you, you know, three weeks later, you would get a custom fitting suit that you would have paid twice as much for and didn't fit as well from Nordstrom, right? So they did the whole cut out the middleman. Those who couldn't afford to go to Hong Kong and get custom suits now could get custom suits. And they had tens of thousands of customers. And I did a project for them where we did some both quantitative and qualitative research. So I did a, you know, a survey monkey to tens of thousands of folks. And then I did qualitative interviews with just 25 people. And with those 25 people, I looked at people who buy all the time. I looked at people who didn't buy all the time. I looked at people who bought once and what happened and really uncovered some interesting things about their product. You know, early on, as you know, when you're small, you can't afford the best manufacturers. You're like the low person on the totem pole. So um, we identified some product quality and I was like, you have a whole set of customers that are ripe for win back, right? send them a shirt, show them that you've improved the quality. Um, so that was a really interesting thing that never would have come out had I not made 30 phone calls. That is a really, really good idea of sending out both mass surveys and picking up the phone and giving those customers a call and having more one-on-one -on -one personal dialogue with them. Did, mm -hmm. Now, did you discover things in the survey that you didn't discover from the one-on-ones or did most of the gold come from the one-on-one? I think it was a, it was a combination of both. Um, you know, without those mass statistically significant, we couldn't identify trends versus, you know, the qualitative feedback always gives you things that you never get in, in quantitative. Um, a lot of those folks that had ordered once weren't even going to take the survey, you know? So they were just like, Oh, I'm done with this brand. And that's, you know, when they stop talking to you, that's when you've lost them, right? So when they're still talking to you and they're telling you, hey, I love this except for um, this little piece was breaking. You know, we have a customer that I told you makes a bunch of great products, but they have one product that's a three and a half star product out of five on Amazon and go back and fix it, right? Make a good product. You can never build a brand on a three and a half star product. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that. If you have a wham-wham product, <laughs> let 
let's fix that, please. <laughs> that's not that's not going to work long term. Hi there, Ecom Masters. Mike Weiss here again with a friendly reminder that you've unlocked access to our exclusive podcast only training on how to create your own supplement, CBD, pet, or skincare brand in just minutes, where we're going to break down from A to Z exactly how to put your own design on top selling products and start selling in just minutes. It's incredible. Now, the principles that you're going to learn are exactly the same principles that we've used with our customers who did over $2 billion. That's right, with a B, $2 billion in sales last year alone. You cannot afford not to take me up on this free training. So to get immediate 100% complimentary access, all you got to do is go to dropfight.com forward slash podcast dash special, or you can just click the link below in the show notes. I will see you soon. So let's move from our first fundamental to our second one. We understand now that we need to have a great product that solves a real problem and you gave us some really interesting ways to go about identifying that problem. Oh, and I want to throw out one more real quick. Go read some reviews on Amazon. People mm -hmm. always talk about what they don't like on Amazon, but one star reviews, pure gold. Okay, so we've talked about that. Let's move on to our second fundamental, which is to make sure that we can make money online. Right. So I spoke a little bit earlier about the $10 products. You know, uh, we tend to, if brands have products $15 or less, then we just, you know, we say, go bundle it, go make a bigger size, go figure out how to make it work. You know, your fees on Amazon are usually in the, depending on the category, you know, they average around 15%, 17% for clothing, you know, but most of them are in the 15% range unless it's a lower price grocery item. So we say, okay, great. You're going to pay Amazon 15%. You're also going to pay for fulfilled by Amazon because you don't want to fulfill it yourself, right? You're going to send everything to Amazon, let them deal with the shipping. They can get it way cheaper than you can. So you're going to spend three or $4 for them to do the, you know, overnight shipping and, and warehousing and all of that. So now you're like, okay, uh, on a $10 product, 15% plus $5. I mean, you're down to 35%. You have no money to market. So really, I think the important thing is, you know, know your fundamentals, right? Know that if you, you say you have 60 to 70% margins, you can afford to go um, spend, you know, 50% to go get a customer, whether it's on Facebook or not. You know, we really shoot for at least a two return on ad spend for those, you know, $50, $60 products where you're acquiring a customer at $20. Um, the other thing to know too is just to understand your lifetime value. So if you have a high repeat, if you have a subscription product, you know, like your supplements, then yeah, maybe you can break even on that first sale. So that's another big thing we see with emerging brands is, you know, we worked with a company that was selling 30,000 a month on Amazon unprofitably. So I was like, why don't you just stop? You'll make more money if you just stop selling. Uh, and then we went through all their financials with them, re helped them redo their product. And now they're selling, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on Amazon a month profitably. Wow. So it seems like a core part of kn knowing how to sell online profitably is understanding your numbers and mm -hmm. understanding okay, what does it cost me? What's my cost of goods sold? What's my, what's my shipping cost, the product cost, the marketing cost? What's my profit margin? What can I afford to spend to acquire a new customer? What's the long-term value of that customer? One mm -hmm. thing I, I see so many people, maybe they forget or they just, they're not thinking about it, but you're the first interaction with a customer, that's not, the only interaction if you're building a real brand because if they're going to stay with you and you're you have their email address or their contact information and you can then work with them and speak to them and provide value to them and sell more product to them to solve more of their problems then you might be able to to break even on that very first customer acquisition event and then over time you make your profit and right. but if you don't know your numbers there's no way you're going to know whether or not you can do that yeah, you'd be amazed, Ben, how many brands I ask, what's your lifetime value? And they can't answer the question. So know your numbers, know your average order value, know your e-commerce conversion rate, know your lifetime value, and then you can make smart decisions about, okay, how much should I, can I afford to spend on customer acquisition? Uh, where does it make sense? That is such a, that is such an important thing that I feel like so many people in e-commerce miss because almost, every, I'd say 95% of people 
They're trying to run Facebook ads to a product and make money off of that first product. But right. it's like, y'all, take a second and think about it. Even if you just get their email, that mm -hmm. email can be worth so much money to you over the long term. Just yes. think long term. Because think about this. Let's say you get your lifetime value of a customer up to, on average, up to $15. Now you know that you can spend anywhere up to maybe 13 or 14 or whatever you're comfortable with that margin being, you can spend less than $15 to acquire a customer and you're still profitable in the long term. So that right. gives you the ability to scale and to build something and to grow a huge business. And by the way, just because your lifetime value is $15 over, let's say six months today, that doesn't mean that it's going to stay there because right. theoretically you're going to be getting better and better and better increasing that lifetime value over time. So you might be spending $14 to get a, a customer worth $15 to you today, but three years from now, that customer might be worth 30, in which case you're rolling in it. So the long term, the lifetime value, that's where it's at. That's where the real gold is. And, right. And yeah. And it's funny when you, when you said that, it made me think of a conversation I had this week with a company that's launching in October. They have their website, they're doing pre-orders. Uh, it's called uh, with pedal and it's sort of the same concept of soap where you drop a, a puck in and you have basically reusable soap. Right. Um, and so he was telling me they were running Facebook ads and, uh, I was like, well, of course, nobody's going to buy soap that's not going to be delivered till October. So change up your strategy, right? You know, you, you sent thousands of people through to your website and four of them purchased. So I, I'm not going to buy soap three months in advance. You know, I, I'm, I'm forgetful enough as it is. You know, I don't want a whole bunch of soap appearing in October that I forgot that I bought, right? <laughs> that's why I don't buy Christmas presents early. So um, what I told him was, you know, one of the things that you can do really well is uh, video views, right? You're, you're different. You're a disruptor. You're a differentiator. People haven't seen this. It needs education. You can get video views on Facebook for two to three cents. So instead of trying to send them to your website to buy soap, why don't you focus on building your list, right? So pre-launch, we do this a lot with folks, you know, we'll do video views and then anybody who watched the whole video, then if they're on Klaviyo, it integrates directly with Facebook, right? And then you can do lead forms. So, hey, I watched this whole video, I'm interested in this soap. And then maybe you do a lead, lead form sign up, and then you're paying a lot less than just trying to go out to everybody to get them a sign up for your list, having no idea what your product is. So, you know, people just try to go straight from top of funnel to buy my product and give me all your money versus, hey, they need to be introduced to your product. They need to consider it. And then, you know, give them something like, hey, all the first thousand signups are going to get this, you know, awesome, who knows, towel, koozie, hat, whatever merchandise that you can do to um, get your word out there too, which makes sense for your brand, right? So it seems like you're almost taking the time and investing in the relationship beforehand to show them the video, get them used to you, start establishing that no like, and trust, then following up with, Hey, l join our list or get ready for a pre-order or get notified when this thing goes live and you're getting, you're getting these micro commitments. So the first one's watching the whole video from start to finish. The next one is trusting us with your contact information. And then they're already somewhat bought in to when you then let them know, Hey, the product's live, you can get it. And remember how awesome it is. Then they're like, Oh my gosh, I totally forgot, but this is great. So it seems like you're really bringing them through, um, like a lot of, uh, you're, you're doing a lot of the heavy work, uh, the heavy lifting on the front end of building trust with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, we, we use this list building strategy for a company. It's a warm cookie delivery. So you want to send warm cookies and milk to your friend, get delivered. Well, they were great in Texas, um, but they were sort of branching out of Texas and nobody had heard of them. And, you know, a lot of their investors were a little sketchy, like, can you make, can you make money outside? And, you know, retail, you're going to have to buy a retail space and you're going to have to buy all this equipment. And so we were able to shorten their time to profitability by about 90% um, by 
before they went out to a market, we would do these targeted Facebook ads telling them, hey, warm, warm, warm cookies are coming to your neighborhood. So literally the day they opened, they had, you know, 10,000 emails of people and they didn't have to start like doing door hangers at, you know, at buildings and college dorms. I mean, they had a warm email list of people that were ready. And then they did these launch parties on day one and there would be lines out the door because everybody knew about them in that town. That makes so much sense. And if it seemed that, that it made me think of something, it seems like if you're developing a product and it's taking some time to get it ready to go to market, that time is not time to be wasted. And mm-hmm. this seems like the perfect strategy to build your audience before you even have your product ready to launch so mm-hmm. that when you do have it ready to launch, you can immediately just slam on the gas pedal and go, 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 go. You don't have to worry about then building an audience. Right. Yeah. Definitely focus on building an audience now. That's what the the Boot and Western Wear Company did before they launched. You know, they officially launched in October a few years ago. But before that, they they had a at least a web page that had, you know, coming soon and sort of some mystery around it and sign up to be on the insiders list. So they had done a good job list building. That makes a tremendous amount of sense. So we've talked about our first two fundamentals, and I feel like we drilled down a little bit and got some really, really got a good understanding of it. Uh, Let's dive into our third fundamental, uh, which is building a brand, making sure we build a brand, not just sell a product. Right. And you can, as you know, you can make money just selling products on Amazon. There's plenty of people that do it. Um, but long-term, you know, a brand that you own and customers that you own are, are worth more, you know, on the market if you ever want to sell than, than just, you know, a, a bunch of different products that may not, may or may not have a total strategy. So, you know, we talked before the show a little bit about building a brand. I keep going back to the, the Western and Boot Company because they, you know, one of their founders at uh, an event here in Austin, about a year and a half, two years after they launched, um, said, you know, we really wish we had made more of a connection with customers and in the early days. So those fans, those early buyers are going to be your advocates. And, you know, you want to think about them not as customers or purchasers, but as advocates and what, how can you connect with them and truly turn them into advocates, right? So they're doing your marketing for you. Um, there's a, there's a great, you know, Chewy's is another great brand that I always talk about that they write handwritten notes and they know your dog or your cat's birthday and they know everything about you. And, you know, when you lose a pet, you know, they write you a handwritten note and it's, you can't discount that kind of customer service. And the nice thing is, is that's something that does not cost a lot, especially when you're starting out, Right. That is such a good point of, of making things so personal and personalized that people can't help but forget you. And when, when you have such a, in the beginning, you're probably going to have a smaller customer base. It makes it way easier to, to do that with. I mean, you can send all the handwritten thank you notes and the thank you letters and people remember that they remember that so, so much. Just as an aside, I can't tell you how many how many um, interviews I've been on the other side on on your side of where people are interviewing me, and the ones that I remember the most. There's one like if you ask me when have you been interviewed before, immediately my mind goes to the one show where the host sent me a handwritten thank you note after that episode. It immediately jumps there. So if that's gonna if that's if that's happening. With us, where we're thinking about that, imagine that our customers. Right. How, like how many times do you buy something from a company and, and they send you a handwritten letter? Probably right. not very often. And, and even if you don't have the time or the bandwidth to do that, um, what you can do is, you know, we did this with email marketing. So most of our clients are on Shopify and they're on Klaviyo. Um, we really prefer that because it's, it integrates all so seamlessly. And so we'll do that after their first purchase. You know, um, one of the brands that we work with, they would get an email after their first purchase from the CEO and it wouldn't say the company, you know, when you get an email, it says the company, no, it says, you know, this person 
CEO, right? And the open rates, as you know, are like two to three X on a, one that comes from a CEO. You want to hear what they have to say. And it's like, you're what makes us great. Thank you so much for your, why we do this, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a picture of the CEO with her child, right? And this is a mom and baby brand. So they feel like they have this connection. And, and so they'll write back and they'll be like, thank you, Lisa. You know, I'm so glad. And they'll tell you all about their journey. So that does two things for you. One is it, it makes that personal connection and someone in customer service reads it. If not the CEO, you know, she does get most of them too. Um, but more importantly, it also sends a great signal to your email providers because you sent them an email and they responded back. So Gmail, Yahoo, you know, they are all like, oh, this is a valid subscriber. Uh, this is a valid sender. People are responding to this. So I'm going to not put this in the promos or the spam box. I love that idea because it's not that hard to set up. You really only have to set it up once and then it's always being sent out and building goodwill with your customers. Whoa, that is powerful. I love that. Yeah, that it's so great. Sense. And really that segmented email marketing, and we use a lot of the data science from Clavio for predictive next purchase, and those are all automated. So there's very few things in marketing you can do that are just set and forget, but a lot of those automated flows are set and forget. Wow. So Carolyn, I want to I wanna thank you so much for uh, for your time today. and. Um, for going into these fundamentals and for sharing your story and for really giving us a sneak peek into how, how you do things and how you, how you, your perspective and how you approach things. And, you know, I'm so glad that we did get your perspective on this because you've helped so many different businesses in so many different spaces from so many different angles, you know, whether it being at Dell and your market research um, company uh, in, in your agency so I'm just tremendously grateful uh, for, for all of the, the knowledge that you shared. So thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really do enjoy helping emerging brands and hopefully, you know, folks got one thing that they can take away from this podcast that makes their business better. Absolutely. And hopefully you amazing people watching and listening got at least three things because we covered three fundamentals So make sure if you haven't gotten those three, go back and listen a couple of times take notes. Carolyn broke it down for you in such an eloquent way. You can't help but become more successful by implementing those things. So make sure not to, uh, not to waste this time that we've spent together. Take notes, implement, change your life. It'll be awesome. Carolyn, where can people go to find out more about you? Take the next step in learning more about your philosophy, how you do things, and get more involved with you. Sure. So we um, are the cobbler with no shoes. We have probably the worst website. We spent all our time working on our clients. So, um, but you can find us at um, roiswift.com, roiswift.com. And you can also just send an email to hello at roiswift.com. Um, we only want to work with folks that we can help and we never want to take anyone's money if we can't help them. So, you know, if you're selling on Amazon and you're doing 20, 30,000 a month, we're happy to do a free audit for you. If you're on Facebook and Instagram and doing advertising and spending five or 10,000 a month minimum, we're happy to audit that for you, let you know if you can be doing any better. Um, again, we, we've, I think turned away two people, uh, two people were doing everything correctly and we turned them away saying, um, you're doing everything correctly. We can't help you. We don't want to take your money. And, um, it's interesting how they still refer people back to us. Um, so I guess there's something to be said for honesty. Absolutely. And that link is going to be on video in the description below and for podcast, it's going to be in the show notes. So Carolyn, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Everybody watching and listening, I appreciate you. Y'all rock. And I hope that you, again, got all three fundamentals here. If you haven't, make sure to go back and jot them down and implement them. It'll be awesome. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care now. Hello again, Ecom Masters. Mike was here again with a big thank you for sticking with us to the end of this episode. I know how valuable your time is and I want to congratulate you for setting yourself apart from the pack by investing your attention into this podcast. Now make sure to maximize this time by taking notes while it's still fresh, 
<laughs> listening to the episode multiple times if you need to and implementing what you have learned right away into your own business. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more training and want to learn the step-by-step -step methodology that you need to build the e-com business of your dreams, I want you to join me for an exclusive invite only training that I'm only giving specifically for podcast listeners. Now in it, we're going to share the secrets of what we've used to scale Dropified into the 2019 5,000 number 55 fastest growing company in America. You will not find this information anywhere else guaranteed to get immediate 100% free access. All you got to do is go to dropify.com forward slash podcast dash special or just click the link below and in the show notes and I will see you on the other side.